In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a real time voting application. As you can see here, we have a question and we can vote for which is our favorite web technology. And when we submit, as you can see, it updated live. Well, but that's not real, real time, right? So let's open another tab and I'm going to put them side by side like this. And now let's see what happens when we vote something on one tab. Look at that, both tabs updated. So this is the beauty of real time. This is what you're going to learn how to build using upright real time functionality inside of a React application. Let's give JavaScript another vote because it's so cool. Awesome. Let me show you how to build this. First thing first, we're going to go to AppRite and create a project and then add a database and everything that we need for the data. You can go to the console. If you don't have an account, it's free. You can create one. And then we're going to create a project. Let's call it real time. We can select Frankfurt. All right. We have the project with the ID. Next, we're going to create a platform web in our case. Let's call this my vote app and for the host name we're going to set localhost keep in mind to change this if you're going to push the code to production click next then they give us the code for upright but we're going to do this in the coding section so we're going to click next here make sure that you store the project id click next and then go to the dashboard now in the dashboard as you can see you have a bunch of things but what we want now is the database we want to create another database let's call it or something like that. And inside of the database, we want the collection. For this, we want the questions collection. Perfect. And then we can add the documents. In this example, we're only going to work with one document, which is going to be a question with three answers and three integers to keep track of the votes. But before we can create a document, we need to create the attributes for that. So as I mentioned, the first one is going to be the text basically the question text. Let's set the size to 1000 and make this required. Next, we're going to say answer one, 1000 and required again. Same for the other two answers. I just went ahead and created them. And next, we want to keep track of how many votes we have for each answer. I'm going to create an integer called votes one. That's going to have a default value of zero. And the same for the other two as well. Just keep in mind that this might not be the best way to do this. You might want to use an array, but I just want to move quickly and focus on the real time functionality. So we go with this now. Perfect. Now that we have the attributes, let's go to the document and create one document that has everything that we want. The text of the question is going to be what's your favorite web technology? First answer HTML, CSS, then JavaScript. And yeah, let's just set zero for the votes and click next and create. So now we have the database, the collection, and we have one document that we can use to query the data. Last thing here on upright, which is very important, we have to go to the settings of the collection and we want to scroll down to the permissions. And here we want to allow anyone to read and also update this collection. Without this, our functionality won't work. Keep in mind that we gave anyone permission to update the collection. In a production environment, you might not want to do that, but rather you'd like to add a role, like only the signup users could update the document. But yeah, again, just for demonstration purposes. Awesome. And with this, we're done on the AppRite website. Let's go to the code and see what we have there. For this application, I created a simple React project using Vite, and I also added Tailwind CSS. We did the exact same thing in a previous video I'm going to put in the description, so I won't go over it again. Also keep in mind that this is not like a step-by-step -step tutorial because I've been thinking to try a new format and instead of a step-by-step -step tutorial, I just show you the important things of the tutorial. And in this case, it's going to be the real-time functionality. So we won't write the code line by line, but rather I'm going to try to explain the code as fast as possible so that we can focus on the main topic. Let me know in the comments if you like these more condensed videos or you want to see step-by-step -step how we do everything. But yeah, as I mentioned, this is a Vit React project and I just cleaned it up a little bit, added Tailwind CSS, and then in app.jsx, I clean the code and we have now just an H1 in my cool app. If we start this application with npm run dev and we go to the browser, you can see that it's working. It says my cool app. Perfect. Also, I removed the app.css file and instead inside of the index.css file, 
I just added some CSS that will help us have three different colors for the select options. And here at the end, we want to style the progress bar to have the same color as the select option. But yeah, that's just it. And probably the main idea here in the CSS is that we're going to use the input checked plus label selector to style the selected border with the color that we want. We'll see this a bit later. All right, let's close this. And the first thing that we want to do is to close this and do npm install app right. I already installed it. Once you have it installed, run again npm run dev to open the live server. Let's make sure that it works. Good. Now we can close this and focus on the code. Inside of our source folder, we're going to create another folder called lip. And inside this folder, let's create appride.js. And inside this file, let me zoom in a bit so you can see better. We want to import the client and the databases from appride. We'll set a new client. We want the database ID and the collection ID, which you can get from appride by going to the console, going to your application databases. This is the database ID. Let's copy it over the dbid and then we're going to copy the collection id which in our case is the questions collection and i'll paste it here and if you remember correctly we also had the project id so let's go back to real time and here is the project id like that just make sure you have the correct ids so that we connect to the right project database and collection next we're going to create a new database instance by passing the client we're going to export this and also the client the database id and the collection id we're going to use these in our application. That's it with AppRide.js. Back in our AppJSX, we want to use AppRide to get the data from the database. So let's import the client, the database, and the database ID in collection. Also, we're going to need to use use state and use effect. We're going to create a new state questions and setting it by default to an empty array. And inside of our return statement, I just updated the code. And what we're doing here is we're looping over the questions and we're going to create a new component question that has all the data for this particular question. For now, obviously it's empty because we have an empty array. So let's get the questions from the database. We're creating a function called get questions from database and then using AppWrite's database list documents method, we're passing in the database ID and the collection ID and this will return all the questions from this collection, which then we can set inside of our question state by using set questions. And last but not least, we want to call this function inside of use effect. We won't have anything on the screen because we don't have the question component. So let's create it. Inside of source, we're going to create another folder called components. And inside here, we're going to have question.sx. I just paste in the initial code. Let me quickly go over it. We have an H2 that has the question text coming from the data that we passed to the component right here. Next to it, we have a form and inside it, we're going to have three voting options. As you can see, this is another component that we're going to create next. And finally, we have a button that we're going to press to submit this form. Let's quickly go and create the vote component. The vote component is simply just a div with an input and label combination. We're going to use input type radio because we want to make sure that only one option is selected at a time. And as you can see here, we have an ID because we want to link the label using the HTML4 property to have the same value as the ID has. That way, when we click on the label, it will toggle the input as well. And inside the label, we show the text, we show the percentage, and we also have a progress bar, which we styled in the CSS. And we show the votes count here at the bottom. Also for the div, which is the parent, we have the class name votes, which we're using a CSS to style them differently based on which child it is. So the first one is a blue color, red color, and then green color. And if you remember this input check plus label combination, this will help us set the border color to be one of the variants. This is how we achieve that effect of selected. All right, now let's make everything work because I just pasted in some code, but it's not yet active. Here for the vote, we need to import it. So import vote from vote like that. And then back in AppJSX, we also want to import question from components question like that. Let's see. Well, apparently we have another error and that's probably because inside of the form we have a handle submit function which we haven't created. So let's quickly create it just like that. We're going to fill it in in a second. But now look at that. We have the UI working. I hope everything made sense. Let me know in the comments. I try to do the best explaining the code without writing the entire code line by line. But yeah, 
Now, if we click, as you can see, we have the CSS working, that selector that we had input check plus label, and it works on all three because we have input type radio, which means that only one can be active at a time. And this is the functionality we wanted to achieve. All right, now we'll notice that we'll have 32% for all of the votes, but well, actually we have zero votes. And that's because here inside of the vote or the percentage value, I just added 33 for now. But actually, this is what we want. We want to get the votes and divide them by the total amount of votes and then multiply by 100 to give us the percentage. But right now we don't have the total votes. So let's create it here on top. Total votes is going to be data votes one plus two plus three. And with this, we should have the correct values of 0%. We can go on app right and let's update the votes a bit to see if it's working so inside of our application, database, collection, and here we can change the data. Let's go down and we can set this to be like three votes, this to be two votes and this to be one vote. Let's update, go back and refresh. Look at that. Now it's working properly. By the way, if you're wondering where we have these properties, data dot votes one, two, three, and then answer one, two, three, and the dot text, just keep in mind that this comes from AppWrite, from our database, and it's basically the attributes that we have in database. Text, answer one, two, three, and votes one, two, three. Just wanted to make sure that's clear. Now we have the UI working. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that we trigger an update to the document. And for that, we're going to go inside of our question and we're going to fill in the handle submit function. This is where we're going to, well, handle the submit of the form. We already set it here on unsubmit, we have the handle submit function. And what we want to do are a few things. First, we want to prevent the default behavior of the form. Because by default, if you have a button of type submit inside of the form and you press it, the form will submit, but it will also refresh the page. And we don't want that. Next, we want to get the form data and we want to get the vote value. This comes from our vote components inside of our inputs. They all have the name of vote. This is how you connect radio buttons between them by having the same name property. So now that we have that, we want to get the value, which is going to be the selected vote. If you go back here, as you can see, the value is the same as the ID and it's basically the text of the answer. So in our case, it's either HTML or CSS or JavaScript. And based on that, we want to update the document and update the correct votes property. So basically, if the selected vote equals to the data answer one, then we want to call databases. This comes from app, right? dot update document. We want to pass in the database ID, the collection ID. We want to pass in the document that we want to update, which again comes from the data. And we want to pass in an object with the properties that we want to update. And in this case, if the vote is the first answer, we want to update the first vote by incrementing it by one. If the selected vote is the second answer, we update the second vote by incrementing one and so on and so forth. And of course, since we're using the databases, the IDs, we also want to import them up here to make sure that everything's working. All right, now let's go to our application and let's see what happens. We select JavaScript, click submit your vote and nothing happened. Hmm, maybe it did. Let's refresh. Wow, look at that. It did in fact update our document from the database, but since it's not real time, well, we couldn't see it without refreshing the page. So for the last piece of the puzzle, we're going to finally get to the real time functionality. So back in our code, we're going to go in our app.jsx. We're going to write this inside of a use effect. Here, we want to do client.subscribe and this needs the channel we want to subscribe to. As you can see here, it says the possible channels are and we can subscribe to the account, collections, document, files, so on and so forth. We can subscribe to one channel or even multiple channels by using an array of strings. But for our case, we just want to subscribe to one channel and we're going to pass in databases dot database ID dot collections dot collection ID dot documents. And this listen to all the events that are happening for the particular database collection and the documents inside them. I see here I wrote databases like this. Okay, 
make sure you don't have any typos. Next, we have a callback function that gives us a payload inside of a response. And here is where the magic happens. This function will be called every time there's an event firing in this particular channel. So if you do console.log res, let's see what's happening. We go to the browser, let's open the console like this. Let's see what happens when we submit a vote. Hmm. Well, nothing happened because I have another typo. Elections. Yeah, I, I should listen to my own advices. Make sure that the string is correct, otherwise it will fail. So let's refresh and then vote again, HTML, submit your vote. And look at that, we get back a response. And this response has the channels, and also has the events it fired, and it has the payload. This payload is the data that changed. And in our case, is going to be this document that has the question, the three answers, and the three votes. The important part, which you need to be aware of, is that the payload is only the document that's changed. So if you have five documents on the page and you change one, the payload is only going to give you back the details about that particular document. So now that we have the data, let's go back to the code and check to see if the event was an update event, because that's what we want to listen to. So if res.events includes, and this time I'm going to paste in the strings to make sure that I don't mess it up. Basically it's databases, collections, documents, everything with the star here, a wildcard. And we want to listen to the update events. If this event is included in our events array, then we want to update the questions by using the set questions method set questions, we want to get the previous questions. And what we want to do is to loop over them, check which question is inside of the payload and only update that question. So here we want to return previous questions, that map question like that. And inside we want to do a check. If the question dot dollar sign ID is different than the response payload dot dollar sign ID, if it's different, that means this document is not changed. We just want to return this document as it is for the question. Otherwise, we want to return res.payload. So this is the new document with the updated information. And just to make sure everything worked, here at the end, let's say console.log updated question, like that. Go back here. Let's clear this up, refresh. And when we press on HTML, submit vote, look at that. Now the votes increased. And also inside of the console log, we have updated question. As you can see, we have it twice. And that's because of use effect. At the end of the use effect, we want to clear up the subscription here. So basically we will, don't want to have it hanging. So the good part about client as subscribe is that it returns a method called unsubscribe, which we can pass in in the return function we can just say unsubscribe like this. So now we're making sure that we're cleaning up the subscription and there's nothing hanging around. So let's see, refresh, select JavaScript because that's the best, submit, and look at that. We only have one call now and everything seemed to be working pretty good. The last thing I would like to do, let's see if it works in another tab. If we open this in another tab, so we have four, three, three votes. Let's give JavaScript another vote. We have four here and in the first tab, look at that. We have four again. We can put them side by side like this. Let's refresh both pages just so we can make sure that it works. And we want to submit CSS from here. Look at that, updated there. And then we want to submit JavaScript from here and then it updated there. And this of course will work from other computers with other browsers and all the gist. You just want to make sure that you publish this project online so that people can access it. The last thing I would like to change, however, is let's make sure that we don't allow a user to submit a hundred thousand times like this. It kind of can be skewed by pressing the button a thousand times. So what we can do, we can go back to the questions here and we can have a piece of state called is submitted. And this piece of state will be set to true whenever we update the document. So by default, it's false. And then whenever we update the document, we set it to true. And we can use this inside of our button to have disabled the equal to is submitted. And of course we need to get use state just like that. So now whenever we submit, look at that, it updated, but we can't submit anymore. Well, of course we can, we can just refresh the page and then the state changes, but at least we avoid some kind of a spam. That's it. 
for this tutorial. As I mentioned, is a different type of tutorial. I hope whatever I explained made sense. Let me know in the comments so I know for a future tutorial. Also, you'll be able to find the code and everything you need in the description. If you liked this, let me know by giving it a like and of course, subscribe for more videos. Bye-bye.